thought we put our hands together for Don Hobbs, president of Success Enterprises. Woo! Woo I'm super excited for this interview. So first and foremost, welcome. Thank Thanks. you for being here at Secret Knock. Let's turn that on. It works better you know, that it's way. It's kind of like no, live welcome. TV. We go up the flow, right? <laughs> exactly. So, so let's get right into it. I'm very intrigued by you, your story, and you often talk about sliding doors. How many people have seen the movie Sliding Doors to begin with? Oh, come on. You got to watch the movie. So why don't you explain the yep. concept behind Sliding Doors, and then let's get into your story. Yeah, Sliding Doors is a great uh, movie and a great example of how life works, because Gwyneth Paltrow, a lead actress, uh, one day wakes up, goes to the tube in, in London, goes to work, and misses the train. Heads back home, not able to make her meeting, and it plays out life as it was as she missed the train. Then they come back and they replay the whole thing over again and she makes the train, slides her hand and just barely gets in, makes it to work. And then they track her life as it was. And those sliding door moments when we have almost like the fork in the road. I went this way or I went that way, but this choice led me to these things. And in Gwyneth's case, it was two different lives completely and such a pivotal moment. And, and I think so representative of how life really is that in every moment we're making choices and those choices have impact on everything we do beyond. That's incredible. So let's go to your first sliding door story. We're gonna rewind 10 years or so. You were 18, <laughs> living in California. 10 years or so, yeah, that's, that's about right. <laughs> 10 years or so. Living in California, and you happened to be at an event where somebody changed your life. Will you tell me that story? Yeah, so, um, in fact, I just was with my mom yesterday. We got to LAX, drove through Orange County, 85 years old, uh, full of life and vigor. Uh, in, uh, in that year, she asked me to attend a program done by Jim Rohn. How many know who Jim Rohn is? I attended, I loved it, what was not to love, right? I was there on date night, so it made no sense to me that I, at 18, was at a, a seminar made no sense at all. Uh, but within 15 minutes, I was like loving every bit of it and taking copious notes. And I went up at the break and I said to him, uh, I want to do what you do and I want to be like you. Which of course was pretty far-fetched and especially considering the impact that Jim has had on the world. But I ended up joining his company, went to all of his programs, joined his company and uh, was with him for eight years, the last two of which I was president of his company and had a chance to work with him very closely. Of course, another big gawky kid came through that organization as well, uh, Tony Robbins. So I got a chance to work with Tony when I was 18 and he was 17 for a few years before he went off to go do whatever he's doing and uh, some little thing he does. And so that was how we started that. But that was, that was one of my sliding door moments. I mean, first of all, I could have said, no, I'm not going, it's date night, I've got a date. I, I certainly could have said, I'm 18, what the heck do I care about Jim Rohn? And uh, the good news is I made it there and it made a huge difference. It was the deal breaker for me. Let's go off of that and talk about courage because for a lot of people in the room, courage is what stops people in their tracks. They want to ask that person for a, a photo or a phone number or to just say hi, but they're afraid to do it. Right. So having the courage at 18 to be able to ask one of the most prolific thought leaders of our time even today to say, hey, hi, can I, I wanna be like you. How do we connect? What was the mindset like of uh, yours back in the day to be able to do that? You know, I, I probably didn't even recognize that. I, I was stunned by the whole thing. You have to understand I came from uh, not the wrong side of the tracks, but I was right next to the tracks. And I didn't come from wealth. I didn't come from anything that was like this. I'd never been in a venue like this. I'd never been in a venue with crystal chandeliers at the Western South Coast Plaza here in Orange County. And, and so for me, all of it was a shocker. But somehow it just seemed like this was a guy that I could relate to. He was very relatable. I mean, I don't know if any of you got to see him, got to meet him, uh, extremely easy get to know and, and felt like he was talking just to you. So it was easy for me to walk up to him and say, you're amazing, you know. But um, I don't know that it was courage as much as probably ignorance. I didn't know I wasn't supposed to do that. It was like, I don't know, why, why wouldn't I, right? The why not factor. I, exactly. So let's talk about the power of the ask. For everyone out here wow. today who's listening to this, who is like, okay, I understand it, I get it, now I want to implement it, I want to do it, 
how do we overcome that fear to make the ask? I think the biggest thing about that is that people that are in positions of influence, people that are leaders, you know, the Greg Reeds of the world, the, there's so many on the stage. I don't want to leave anybody out, but certainly we all appreciate what this event is and the mindset that Greg had for it. People like that love to give. Most people don't ask. And the biggest thing is, uh, I've, I don't know that I've ever been turned down by somebody when I've walked up and said, hey, can you help me? Or would you be willing to have, can I buy you lunch? Or can I, you know, can we, can I, can I have your phone number? Can we connect again? Hey, can I, you know, I'm, I'm going to send you something on Instagram. Will you follow up with me? And I got to tell you, to this day, I think people are very willing to help. And it's part of mentorship. You know, there's a responsibility that goes along with, um, with the possibility, you know, these, these possibilities that these people have this, uh, this greatness that they've achieved in whatever way it is, could be financial, as Greg said, or it could be uh, physical or whatever it is, but whatever it is they've done, they want to give that away, and they're looking for people who are sincerely interested. And I think the biggest thing is most of us don't ask because we're concerned about how they're going to judge us. They're not judging us. We're judging ourselves as being not worthy. And when we get to that place, we've got to start breaking through those uh, patterns and behaviors and recognize it's not just in asking for that, it's in all things we do that we're not getting what we need because we're not asking. Wow, I hope you guys are really absorbing this information. This is brilliant, Don. I was reading an article the other day and it said that certain things, suicide rates, depression, um, abuse cases have quintupled in many cities because for right. the first time, many people are dealing with insane levels of stresses that they've never dealt with before. So on top of that, we look at effective leadership in these very uncertain times. Talk to me more. I know you're doing a lot of work on this as well. Well, let me take you back. Everybody go, go back in history. It's 8.46 a.m. September 11th, 2001. How many remember where you were or what happened? Tragedy always brings out the leaders and the people who rise to the challenge. And I believe that right now we have an interesting opportunity because there's a, there's a thing going on in Russia and the Ukraine that's, that's pretty hard. There's uh, stuff going on post-pandemic, if, if, if you believe we're in post-pandemic, I think we're close to post-pandemic. But regardless, even during the pandemic, there were so many people that were isolated, insulated, didn't know what to do, their businesses fell apart, had no idea how to adjust, didn't know how to pivot. Uh, now we're in a different world where everything's changed, but we may be trying to hold on to the past going, oh, if only we could return to days of old. Well, there are no days of old, these are the days. And I think for most of us, what we've got to recognize, Dominique, is that we've got to, we are the leaders if we accept the challenge, if we step up to it and say, you know, I'm going to lead. Now, it could be in, again, your industry. Uh, you know, we're, I, I've been in the, I was never known as I stepped out of Roan's company, I was never known in the massive speaking world because my industry was real estate. And we took on the challenge. And, and to this day, I'll meet realtors and they go, you changed the entire industry. Well, that was thought leadership, right? That's one kind of leadership. You get to people who are doing things like, I've got a, a very good friend of mine now who at 40 something years old has alopecia. She's lost all of her hair. Tough condition. Her, her self image dropped. And then she realized she had to recover from this because she had two daughters that she needed to bring up. That's parental leadership, that's leadership. By the way, she's a coach in volleyball. And so guess what she teaches her, her student athletes? Uh, last week we were talking, she and I were talking, and last week a 12-year-old girl uh, who had been bullied because of her alopecia committed suicide. But I believe that what McKenna Wrights is doing is stepping up into that challenge and saying, we're gonna transform lives so that that doesn't happen. Well, right now we've got the opportunity and, and, and actually more than the opportunity, we've got the responsibility to tackle all of this 
and to take on the challenge of being the bigger version of you, the, the greatness of who you are. And here's what I know, and you, you're here, so I'm assuming that most of you have that sense of self, but you may be here doubting yourself, looking at people going, well, all these people are great, and I'm, what am I doing here? Why do I deserve to be here? What am I doing here, right? First of all, you won your first swim race that you ever were in as the sperm dashed and there were millions of you and you won the war, right? You won the game. The only reason that you're here today is because you're a winner. What I know about each and every one of us is we were born into greatness and then forget it and forget it and forget it and forget it. The biggest thing I will tell you is we have a chance to rise back up to who we are, not, you know, Jim Rohn had a quote years ago and he said, uh, you can have more than you've got because you can become more than you are. And I changed that many years later to be, you can have more than you've got when you remember who you are. And I truly believe that all we have to do is peel away the layers of garbage that other people have told us or that we believed about ourselves at some level. My dad didn't play catch with me one day. I remember very distinctly, five, six years old. Why? Because he had to go to work. What does a five or six year old understand about the concept? But my decision was, dad doesn't have time for me. He doesn't love me. Boy, don't think I didn't carry that for a long time. So I want you just to understand that we have an opportunity and, and leadership today is about stepping into where's the challenges? What do I have access to? Right now, you know, we are, we are, success was bought by EXP Realty, which is the fastest growing real estate company in the, in the history of real estate. And part of the reason for that is because of the thought leadership of Glenn Sanford. We're going to do it completely different. We're going to have a completely upside down model. The agent's going to be at the top instead of at the bottom. Right? Well, that created a whole different paradigm. So we're creating financial futures for people that never had them before. We took over Success Magazine. It's 125 years old this year. 125 years, it was called New Thought back then. By the way, I didn't found it. You get that, right? Uh, so, so New Thought. And, and today at 125 years old, we're, we have a, a coaching company, a coaching certification, a franchise for those who want a uh, co-work space that's phenomenal. We've got all kinds of things. Why? Because we're stepping into what's next, what's next, what's next, what's next. And for each of us, that's the opportunity that we have. What's next? What's next? A lot of people here at Secret Knock this year are thinking the same thing. What's next? It is a time where a lot of people are reinventing themselves, more so than ever before. Right. So for someone in the audience right now who's listening to you saying, what's next for me? What advice would you have as someone who has reinvented himself for any of us to take away? Uh, so I think that it's going to be, first of all, uh, what we just talked about, changing your thoughts about you is going to be the first step because we, we can't change anything out there until we change in here and we can keep looking for answers out there, but we're never going to find the solutions until we work in here, right? So I truly believe that. Second thing is I'm going to tell you that I think financial literacy is going to be a big deal because financial, the financial world is completely being up, up, turned upside down. And all of that's happening through digital currency. And, you know, it's almost like saying, you know, I don't, I don't like going, I don't like having an ATM or I don't like doing online banking because I really like going into the bank. Well, wake up and smell the coffee. We've gone past that. We've got Starbucks cards that we walk into Starbucks and buy a coffee. That's digital currency, guys. You're not unused to it. You've just never thought about it. You've never looked at it. And this thing called cryptocurrencies and bitcoins, all that stuff, all this jargon that keeps coming out, you go, well, hopefully this stuff will go away. It isn't going away and you're gonna have to deal with it and we're gonna have to become literate because the world is changing. We also have to look at the fact that we're not just a, a singular US economy, we're a global economy. And with that goes lots of opportunities and lots of challenges. And so the challenge for, for us right now, Dominique, is reinventing is about growth. It's about new learning, new education, new things. We, we've committed ourselves uh, for the real estate business. In five years, we believe 50% of all the transactions will be done in cryptocurrency, some form of digital currency. I can't even walk into the bank and give them $6,000 anymore. They won't take it because they're worried about it being laundered money. We have to start dealing with something different. 
So we said, we're going to change the educational level of the realtor because in five years, 50%. In 10 years, I believe every transaction that ever gets done will be done in crypto. So we have to start thinking about what do we do to not only educate us, but help and lead others in the things that we're going to have to do. Ah, oh, brilliance. Brilliance. Don Hobbs, thank you so much Thanks, for your time. Dominique. You guys give it up for Don. Woo!